Today I'll be joined by writer, musician, filmmaker Sasa Jenkins to discuss his new documentary, All Up in the Biz, about the legendary Biz Marquis. How you doing? Feeling good, feeling good. Ha happy to have you here. Um, welcome to the show. Um, uh, I, I discovered I discovered Biz Barkey. I was I was a young kid. Um, I was born in the early '80s, um, and it was something called jukebox television, <laughs> where right. you had to like pay a couple. You had to pay like the a box. dollar the box. You yeah. paid a, a dollar, and you get like three videos. Yeah, and yeah. you know uh, that's how he came across my my radar and my world and my tidy section of, of East Baltimore. What was your first encounter with Biz Barkey? I mean, growing up in Queens, you know. Uh, uh, in Astoria, you know, our cousins were at Queensbridge, you know, and Queensbridge was a hotbed of musicians, rappers. Um, the Juice Crew was basically their headquarters was Queensbridge, and so, you know, listen to Marley Marl's mix show. I first heard Biz on that show. I mean, one of my favorite songs was Nobody Beats the Biz, and oh, that's, I have the very fond memories. Because it samples the Steve Miller band, and back in the 70s, hip-hop, like, DJs played a little of everything, and so you could like a little bit of rock and roll, you can like disco, you can like whatever. So it was a combination of hearing the Steve Miller band in a hip-hop song in a way that just brought me back to my youth youth, and then at that moment in time, this made me feel like I was connected to something that was bigger than me. Thinking about it in a, in a historical context, um, you know, um, I mentor, I, I teach, uh, we, 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 hip hop is embedded in everything that we do from creative writing to, to, to filmmaking. H how would you introduce Viz Markey, his contributions and his body of work to people who are new um, to the genre of music, young listeners, people who are um, still in elementary school, just finding right. their way? I mean, if you, when you, if, when and if you see the film, you see what an influence he was on such important MCs like Big Daddy Kane and Rakim. I mean, Rakim wept at the memory of his friend. Mm -hmm. And um, when you think about who those guys are and you think about Biz, I mean, those two guys, Kane and Rakim, are very serious, well-respected lyricists. And Biz was this guy who was kind of a, you know, he had jokes, he was funny, you know, he didn't take himself seriously. And so you wouldn't think that this guy who had so much humor had a song called Pickin' Boogers mm -hmm. would be such a profound influence on two very important voices, foundational voices like Rakim and Big Daddy Kane. So I mean, I, th I think to see, to understand Biz Markie is to understand what the essence of hip hop is. And what I've come to understand is that, yes, you know, this year is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, but hip hop is way older than that, man. If you think hip hop is 50 years old, you're smoking crack in 2023 <laughs> because <laughs> I did a film about Rick James. I did a film about Louis Armstrong. Same guys, same language, same environment. It's the same thing. So you're gonna tell me that hip hop is different from Louis Armstrong growing up in the hood in New Orleans or Rick James growing up in the hood in Buffalo? I mean, it's the same story over and over again. Black music in America is a reflection of and reaction to the environment. So 50 years, get your money, everybody in hip hop. And it's great, yes, Cool Herc and lots of other pioneers set this thing off that we understand to be hip hop, but understand hip hop is way older than 50 years old. If you had to put an age on it. I mean, thousands of years. It's, it's how we speak, it's how we express ourselves, it's how we dress, it's our language, it's how we re react to the environment, it's how we speak to each other. That's what hip hop is, it's not just two turntables and a microphone. It's people. Hip hop at the end of the day is people. I'm so happy you made this film because um, well, one of my dreams was profiling um, Biz Markey for like a magazine and just spending some time to just um, to hear some of those old stories and just to get into his mind. Um, I think he deserves a biopic and all of that and definitely the film that you made. How, tell me how the project came about. Well, when Biz was alive, I met with him. He approached me about doing a doc on his life, and um, we had a great conversation, and we talked about a lot of the things that wound up in this film, being in that film, but it just, I couldn't get a deal for it. I couldn't sell it. And then Mass Appeal wound up having this program called Hip Hop 50, where we were producing all of these films for Showtime, specifically ramping up to the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So I approached them again with the project and said, hey, this would be a great project for the Hip Hop 50, and that's how it happened. Or what did you learn about Biz while working on the film? I mean, he knew who he was. 
I mean, I think I know who I am, but I mean, it took me some years. I mean, he knew at a young age who he was and he embraced it. He was different from everyone else. People made fun of him. He embraced that and made that his, his, his armor, you know, his personality. He, 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 made, he made you laugh at him, but not laugh at him, laugh with him. And so the power of hip hop. Eminem does the same thing. A lot of rappers use their, um, their, pa their pain from their youth or whatever, turn it around on its head to become like a shield. And I mean, to, to know who you are at that age, at such a young age, that's why he became who he became. And that's something that's, I think it's universal. Everyone should want to know who they are and be confident in who they are. And that confidence made him who he became. You know, uh, so I didn't know he was such a, a collector of, you know, um, like toys and games and all kinds of interesting objects. But what I, I may have missed is what age did he start? Was that something that started in his teens or? Well, I think it started once he got money because, I mean, <laughs> yeah. as his wife would say, he was sort of making up for all the things that he didn't have as a kid, mm. you know. So I think once he started having money and traveling, you're, you're in a, you know, in Arizona and you see an evil, an evil action figure at a thrift store, you're going to buy it. You know, so I think once he started traveling and coming into money is when he officially became a collector. It's interesting. It's like a, um, a lot of us do that. There's a Gerard Carmichael joke where he says, every time you see a man in his 30s with a pair of uh, Air Jordans, behind every man in his 30s with a pair of Air Jordans is a kid that needs a hug. Right. <laughs> yeah. What, what else did you learn? I mean, he was the essence of hip hop. I mean, I think in terms of... Um, being open to so many different things and traveling when he did, when, when he traveled, like back then, there weren't cell phones or beepers or anything, right? So for him to be a guy from Long Island who traveled from way out in Long Island to be in the Bronx, be in Queens, be in Brooklyn, to, and to be known, to make a name for yourself, like he built his own celebrity in the way that people use uh, social media today. There was no social media. He was the platform. And so he made that platform work in ways that were Phenomenal and way ahead of his time. But somebody so important to the genre, um, so important. It's always interesting to me that when we have these conversations and we're like doing these lists of like top rappers or whatever, and I know it's all subjective, but I, I feel like his name doesn't come. I feel like his name, I even feel like Rock Kim's name, I feel like their names don't come up enough. Right. I mean, you know, I did a book called The Book of Rap List where there's lots of lists in there, and yes, it is subjective, but I mean, these days, I mean, do people re really care about lists? It's really just whoever's making the list, them broadcasting or transmitting who they think is the greatest, but I mean, do these kids really care about who's the greatest? Yeah, but, I, you know, we, we, those of us who, you know, we, we grow up in it, it's just a conversation that comes up all the time. Like, right. I mean, I know around my family, we fight. We fight about this, like, right. you know, I, I damage relationships. <laughs> right, well, you know. <laughs> Over taste, you know. <laughs> I hear you, I mean, I, I, think, I think at the end of the day, though, hip hop is people, mm -hmm. as weird as it sounds. It's, cult, it's a culture, so it's like, is there one thing in your culture that's better than something else? Well, no, everyone right. is contributing to that culture, you know what I mean? So it's like, you could be really whack like a mumble rapper now, or you could be Rakim. Everyone's making a contribution at some point. You, you ever feel like, like hip hop has become so big, um, the biggest genre of music, and artists are, are making way more than they ever made. Um, the, do you feel like it, it should be something that should be kicked back to like the founders and the pioneers, like something set up? I mean, you know, it's the old story of the blues and jazz and everything else. I mean, we are masters of language and art and style but when it comes to the business that's run by others sometimes we get taken advantage of i mean my hope is you look at a guy like jay-z who's more successful than anybody mm -hmm. he's a great example and hopefully there will be more people like him who can lead the way in terms of uh doing good business i think Nas is someone who i know who has come a long way who has great representation and does good business so I think it's evolving, but there's always going to be people who are going to be exploited, unfortunately. But it feels like these days, artists have more control over their art and their commerce, so hopefully more people are taking advantage of that. The world was shocked um, when, when Biz Markey passed. It's just, you know, it's just, it, wasn't, it wasn't expected. But then I, I think about DMX, and I think about Mums the Poet, and, and Coolio, and, 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 and Shock G. And, um, 
you know, it, it's, it makes you just pull back. And I mean, for me, like, um, it, you know, looking at the health, different health issues with people in my family, it makes me like kind of think about about my own mortality. Sh should we be having a bigger conversation about this? Um, yeah, I think people in general, black people specifically, should be having more conversations around health and, and mortality and um, lots of other things that are sort of being discussed directly and indirectly in the music. I mean, that's what's powerful about the music. I mean, a kid could be from the Bronx and a mumble rapper or whatever, a drill rapper and rapping about hyper materialism, but he's doing that because it's a reflection and, re and reaction to how he feels about himself in America and where he thinks he needs to be to be important. So it's all baked in there, but we have to unpack it and, un and unravel it and to have more of these discussions to make some changes. Greg Tate too, I was like, damn, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's you know, um, it's, it's, it's heavy. So you've done projects on Wu-Tang, Rick James, um, Louis Armstrong. What in your eyes makes a music star a legend? And what does that legend need to have to make it a good story for you to feel like telling? I think they need to be original. I think they need to be, uh, have challenges in their lives. I mean, most of these people who have had the privilege of making films about have, have amazing challenges that they overcame, I think. Um, I think those kinds of challenges and personal issues are things that are universal, that go beyond music. Not everyone is going to be able to be a great rapper, a great guitar player, but the personal stuff that we all go through, when you can sort of unpack that stuff and weave it into the art that they make, it helps you better understand their art by understanding their personal lives. And it's the mm -hmm. personal stuff that's more relatable to most people. So, got to have a compelling backstory. The film is very, very important. Um, I, I can't wait for everyone to... Um, to go to Showtime and watch it. What's, what's next for you? I'm doing a series with Jordan Peele about black cowboys right now. Where? Um, and I also have a film about Ed Sullivan that's about to drop. Oh. Yeah, he's got an interesting backstory that people don't know. Yeah, can you give us a little bit? Well, he was, a, he was an ally. People talk about you know, white people just being woke or whatever, like the way the time in which he was woke and what he did with television and giving black people a voice on national television when so many people, including advertisers that we all know and love today, mm. did not want Ed Sullivan to put these black people on TV. So uh, he made a contribution in, in his way and um, you know, that's what the film's about. And when can we see that? Um, it just got, you know, it's being negotiated now, it's done uh, sometime in, in, I would say in 25. I would think 24, 24, yeah, we're 23 now. But tell everybody when they can see All Up in the Biz. All Up in the Biz is August 11th, which is hip hop's 50th birthday. So happy birthday, hip hop. 50,000th. Well, you know, <laughs> it's the 50th. Happy birthday, Cool Herc and everybody else who was an early contributor who gave us the opportunity to do what we do today. I mean, I started out as a writer, uh, publisher of magazines. I mean, I've had a way longer career in hip hop than a lot of rappers. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm very thankful for what hip hop has done for me for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, man.